Hello on Wednesday the 17th of March and anyone who is of Irish heritage will know that it's St. Patrick's Day. Although the usual celebrations we associate with it, especially in New York, can't take place this year. The special prayer for today. Almighty God, who in your providence chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle to the Irish people. Keep alive in us the fire of the faith he kindled and strengthen us in, the, in our pilgrimage towards the light of everlasting life. Amen. Today's readings are from Psalm 91 verses 1 to 4 and Isaiah chapter 49 verses 8 to 15. I've already touched on the fact that for many people today is a prominent day in their diaries. But how much do we know about Patrick and his association with Ireland? Patrick wasn't born in Ireland. He was captured as a teenager and taken there as a slave, where he worked as a farmhand for six years. During this time, he had a vision of God and became a devout Christian believer. He then felt that God was saying that he should return to Britain and his family. And against all odds, he managed to secure a place on a ship. After spending time with his family, God called him back to Ireland as a Christian missionary and many Irish people started to follow Jesus because of his teaching. Verse 9 of today's reading from Isaiah says, Say to the captives, come out and to those in darkness, be free. I find these words to be very poignant relating to Patrick, given that he was a slave. But the poignancy goes further than that because of the spiritual freedom people had because of Patrick's teaching and preaching. These verses at the start of Psalm 91 provide a reminder of God's overarching protection with images of a fortress as a refuge and sheltering under God's wing. I'm not sure how Patrick was treated when he was a slave, but I'm certain that life as a slave wasn't easy, even if their masters treated them well. However, from the thumbnail sketch which I gave of Patrick's life at the start of this talk, I think that it is apparent that God was watching over him, and we know that God had a special purpose for Patrick's life. When he was captured and taken to Ireland, it would have been impossible for Patrick to have possibly begun to imagine how things would work out. But for God, nothing is impossible. Our next prayer is part of St. Patrick's breastplate. This day I call to me God's strength to direct me, God's power to sustain me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's vision to light me, God's ear to my hearing, God's word to my speaking, God's hand 
to uphold me. God's pathway before me and God's shield to protect me. Amen. Today's prayer points. Let's start by praying for the victims of modern day slavery. Let's pray for Ireland and for ongoing peace, particularly in Northern Ireland. And let's pray and give thanks for all teachers everywhere. And I invite you to join me in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Do please carry on taking care and enjoy the rest of your day. And I come to a blessing which I think is appropriate for St. Patrick's Day. May God give you grace to confess the faith of Christ crucified. And may God give you strength to offer yourself to him. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you, your family and neighbours, today and evermore. Amen.